who is Hugh Page? I, I'm really interested how you st stepped away and then how you got your very first paying customer. You ready for some quick fire questions? Welcome to the Jod Pod, a micro podcast where we interview CEOs, entrepreneurs, founders, authors, and coaches. Today, we are joined by Hugh Page, Managing Director of Integrated Value Consulting. Hugh, great to have you with us today. Hi, James. Brilliant to be on the Jod Pod. Looking forward to it. Fantastic. Thanks for the name check on the Jod Pod as well. I do. I, that, means a, that means a lot to me. Um, Hugh, for those of us who don't know who you are and what do you do, who is Hugh Page? Well, Hugh Page is, uh, I, I'm, as you probably can hear from my voice, I'm uh, Irish, but I'm actually half Irish, half Indian, but was born and grew up in Ireland. And uh, I'm very much a family person. Uh, we, between the two of us, we've got five kids. And, uh, you know, I've made sort of, he had an interesting career, but one of the things I've really got right is making sure I've had time to enjoy that journey and loved the journey of being a father at every step of the way. If we kind of go back, though, to give a bit of, bit of sense of me, when I was a sort of younger and my teenage years, I was absolutely passionate about sport and in particular sailing. So everything was about sailing, sailing, sailing. I used to work at sailing, you know, race at weekends and do everything. And then professionally, I went um, to university. I did physics in Trinity College, Dublin. And then, you know, I was good at numbers, which is why I did it. Didn't really know what I wanted to do. And then got interested into uh, business. And I did a master's in business and finance and went into the city of London, where I spent uh, more or less 20 years there working as an equity investment manager and an equity research analyst. And ironically, actually, it was my sailing that informed the whole approach that I follow and still follow to today, rather than the academic parts. Because I learned to really, to win in sailing, you needed strategy, you needed tactics and agility to adapt to the wind. And really the core traits of valuable businesses are they can actually adopt a strategy, they can get clear tactics, and then they have agility to keep that product market fit as they go through. So it was, uh, it was kind of ironic, actually. And, you know, even when I raced in big boats in, in, uh, in America to win, it was the same thing. You needed strategy tactics agility but the only difference there was you needed a bit of a bigger a big checkbook in order to win but um yeah and now what i've done is i've um in order to work directly with companies i founded integrated value consulting and we're a business advisory firm and we work with smes and investor-backed startups to build scale and exit valuable businesses at a premium. And ju just to define really what a valuable business is, because finance is terrible for throwing out these things, a valuable business is one that you actually can deliver excess returns to either founders or to the investors. And it's one that can be sold at a premium. And if done rightly, a valuable business will also deliver freedom through being able to, to deliver flexibility, fun and funds. So that's where where sort of brings you up to what I'm at to now. Okay, so that's so that's for a founder that starts a business. You'll be able to take them through from where they are now to actually what an exit would look like, and what a, for want of a better term, when you say premium, in my head I'm thinking life changing, you know, never having yes. to work again type scenario. Is that is that the kind of language that that you that, that's accurate? Yes. Yeah, so we. If I could, if that's a very well put, uh, James. If I could just sort of just elaborate that on a little bit. You can either slice into, uh, but I'll just explain our offer a little bit and then I will explain that in more detail. So our consulting and accelerator offer is built around demystifying strategy and valuation to increase business and exit value and to attract and wow investors. But really, what, what the case is, there's a massive opportunity for SMEs and investor-backed startups right now. So in the UK alone, there's 5% of businesses make about 80% of the revenues. So that's the, the prize, as it were. 
in in terms of um, in terms of uh, there's people who are wanting and hungry for maybe not a corporate type life, able to work. There's capital around for SMEs and investor backed startups. There's also systems around and you know software as a service. So to build a valuable business, you need many things, but two in particular. You need the ability, you need a toolkit to work in the business, which is actually powerful and extensive. But you also need a toolkit to work on the business, the design and strategy. And that's limited and suboptimal, especially for SMEs and investor-backed startups. So what IVC is all about is giving you and providing you that toolkit for you to work on the business. And what we've done is we've built a valuable business builder system. There's five steps in, in that system. Step one is we, we give you the strategy and valuation toolkit. And step two, three, and four is to build out your business operating system or your business blueprint, you can think of it. So in step two, we create your strategy, which isn't just a woolly type strategy. That's very rock solid. Who exactly is your customer? What's their problem? What's your value proposition? And importantly, what capabilities you need to sustainably deliver superior value to your customer and to the business. Now, once you've got that in place, that informs the operating model. And then when you've got the operating model in place, that also informs your valuation. For the build stage companies, it's more you're just, just checking to make sure the structure is correct. And later on, it's leading to a full-blown valuation. So the way to think of it is, that if you were asked to build a house, you would ask an architect to have the specialist tools to create a building blueprint, and then that can be passed to project managers and to trades, and you can actually bring the, the, the building to life. So, so the Valuable Business Builder system gives you effectively that business blueprint and the toolkit. Now, what that does, it avoids um, sort of a, a key problem that a lot of small businesses suffer from, three in particular. It's this re reverse domino effect. A lack of strategy and a lack of clarity over strategy and the operating model, what that tends to do, it tends to create unpredictable sales and scalability issues, which then translates into uninspiring profits and a double hit to the valuation because the profits are lower and you can't explain it to investors. So the Valuable Business Builder system enables you to take over, solve those problems and actually create a company which has got a positive domino effect where you've actually got a clear strategy and operating model which then feeds into predictable sales and scalability, inspiring profits and then you get a double positive to your valuation because you can actually explain to investors this is how it works almost like you have will you have that business blueprint so so it's it's very much a if you're on the build stage you're you're more creating sort of how will this work if you're in the scale stage you might be bumping up and looking for funding rounds and how do i present this business to, to investors. And if you're at the exit stage, you're thinking, well, how do I present this to investors and showcase it? And it's always the same way. If you can actually explain to anyone what the business operating system is, it's effectively you've got the story meets the numbers. So you've got the strategy, which informs the operating model, which translates into the valuation. And now investors, you can see where this business is going. And importantly, if they buy it, how to take it there. And if you're the owner of the business, you've got the, the map to take it there yourself. So it's, it's actually a, a very, very effective um, sort of, a, a sort of um, system for you. And if this sounds of interest or this type of thing, what we've designed is we've designed a diagnostic to check if you're building a valuable business. Mm -hmm. So if you go, if you Google Hugh Page IVC, it'll take you to Integrated Value Consulting's website. And on the right hand side, you'll actually see a, um, a, a, a big picture of London with the question, are you building a valuable business? Click on that diagnostic, it'll take you through and you have to answer a series of 28 questions which will benchmark your business against the four key traits of a valuable business. And they are, have you got a competitive advantage? Can you scale within that competitive advantage? Can you actually extract the profits 
within your competitive advantage and can you actually have a sound risk profile once you have that you can think of it as being you've got a standard multiple for the valuation of the business but it, your multiple is expanding and expanding and expanding as you can roll in these these uh, answers to these questions. Mm -hmm. So even the likes of an Amazon and an Apple, they'll be miles along that valuable business journey, but they're trying to go further along it. So it's well worthwhile taking it wherever you are. If you're not on that pathway, you need to get on it. And if you are on the pathway, there's ways to to increase your business value. And the diagnostic has been done in a way mm -hmm. so you will receive a tailored report for you to get instant feedback and should you wish to explore in some more detail you can just book a discovery call and it is a discovery call for us to meet have a chat about your business and provide insights for you to actually see if we can increase your business value or your exit value to to understand this i'm thinking some kind of basic terminology people often say that people get stuck working in a business rather than working on a business, you know, woods for trees, you know, yes, type, type cool. of analogy. And I think a lot of people now are probably feeling busy. They're yeah. delivering, they're doing products and they're, they're pushing things out. But, yeah. but from what it sounds like is that the framework that you can, you're, you're talking about is that allows people to step away and actually see if what they're doing is building something that is that is valuable as a as a as a business that that that's ex that's exactly right apologies if you can hear the dog but um the uh, that's 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 exactly right Dogs and the way, way the way i um the way i like to think of it is in order for a business to operate well you have to be able to create deliver and capture value it's not about being busy and about getting work done it's about creating, delivering, and capturing value. And the, once you've got a strategy, it's about how do we, at a high level, create, deliver, and capture value. Once we've built an operating model, it's about how does this actually translate to doing the work. So what, can, what, what there is at this point in time, there is a mass of tools. But back to the sailing example, you need the right strategy, you need the right tactics, and then you can pick a plethora of different tools to use, but then you will be doing the right work in order to deliver the value. And wh wh why it's so important to work on the business is you can only really deliver superior value to your niche. So if you don't absolutely define in your strategy what your niche's problems are, it's very easy for there to be creep, and then you start serving people who you're just all right at serving. And then you that feeds into the inability to scale the business, the inability then to extract superior profits and really to be the key person for a few people rather than something to everyone with average margins. I think there's some valuable lessons for everybody. There, you know, no matter where you are on your journey, if you even if you're thinking about starting a business, that that niching example is is absolutely key. Um, one of the yeah. things that we're trying to do on the job pod uh, queue is to inspire people to step out of their comfort zones and create something from nothing. I, I'm interested because you're talking about sailing and you're speaking about working in the city for a number of years, but now you're running your own your own business is. Was that always going to happen? You were always going to become an entrepreneur and, and run your own business? Or was this just happened for other reasons? It was, it was a lot of different reasons. Uh, I really enjoyed working in the city. It was a great time. But the city started to change where when I was working in the city, it was very much right. Basically, make your money. You get paid. Job done. You could work around your lifestyle, basically. Then it shifted to more, basically, you are working for the business, you're getting in early, you're going home later, you're working at weekends. And, and, and that was something was a no for me, because then I would have been sort of missing growing up with the children, doing the things I wanted to do. And I don't think it was necessary, because I think to be creative, you need space. It's not about getting stuck in doing the doing, it's actually thinking and being creative and making 
in this case, if you're trading and investing, making money or writing insightful reports. But what really, really sort of, um, there was an opportunity to, what started me on the journey was I set up um, a, a research boutique, basically, when I was writing research for a subsidiary of SOCGEN. I then, a lot of the clients said, we really like the work you do. We couldn't care less where you work. So that was the insight. Do you know what? It's about what I do. So <laughs> let's just set it up. And um, we had yeah. impeccable timing. It started 2008, which was, you know, disaster. We ended up writing research for about a year just with, with just effectively to get things going. But then eventually it became, you know what, you can actually even get flown over by Rolls-Royce Aerospace, along with all the other analysts from top uh, companies. So it was possible to actually have a presence because people wanted you and your insights. And then I really realized that my passion was to, to actually work directly with companies. So I set up integrated value consulting. But it actually, when I say the words, it gives you the, the, the freedom and the sort of flexibility to do things and, you know, the fun and the funds. The truth is that um, my parents became older. I was able to look after them. I was able to do all the necessary things. It was very much a case of that uh, I was able to give back, even if it meant doing a lot of things from hospital beds and doing the things around. So work always got done, but you could do it around your lifestyle. So what I would say to people is, you know, tomorrow never really comes. It's scary to leave a high paying job if you want and to start something up new. But uh, but life's too short. If you've got a dream and you've got a passion and you want to do something, do do it. But you do need to structure it around actually building a valuable business rather than just saying, I love doing this. Because actually a business is about attracting clients, converting clients, then delivering the work you love to deliver and monetizing it. But you need to get a whole system of activities in order to do it successfully. Mm, mm. I th I, it sounds so, you know, I love your story about talking about creating freedom and having not necessarily work-life balance, but just kind of a life as well as work. Um, I think it's so yeah. important with family and, and parents, et cetera. Um, one of the things you mentioned there was uh, you you need a you know stepping out of your comfort zone, starting something, selling something, but doing it in the right kind of way. I, I'm really interested how you st stepped away, and then how you got your very first paying customer specifically for you, rather than any of the other businesses you were working for. <laughs> I'm afraid my uh, story of how I got my first uh, paying customer was when. Um, well, in the when I set Integrate Value Consulting up, uh, a friend of mine, actually, who we still work together, um, said, I don't care what you do, Hugh. I've always wanted to work with you. So I'm actually sending you a check. I'm going to be your first invoice on your books. And it, it, it took off there. And the name of actually that firm is Select Executive Search. And we partnered together where it's Executive Search meets uh, meets company analysis and so what we can do is we've developed an absolutely unique value proposition because you can actually look at a role where you've got the company, the strategy, what they're trying to achieve in their hire. Now, this is at the C-suite senior level. So I'm not involved in the executive search part. I'm involved in mapping out the company, connecting those two together. And uh, so ironically, my first customer is uh, still... Uh, a flourishing and growing customer, actually, and we do a lot of work together. And it's a really fun, you know, that's fun, it, it, it's a fun relationship as well. So that, that's so important, I think. Though, if you're going to start anything on your on your own, you'd be surprised the people that are looking at you, hoping that you do well, and and yeah. wanting to support you in in ways that they can, and and actually, if someone's <laughs> uh, you know, doing well enough that they can write you a check and send you a check. You know, that's absolutely fantastic. But there's other people out there that will want to support and that will buy and, and support your, your, you know, there's initial few few steps that you make. Um, that's a really nice story for yeah. you. That really is. Um, we'll have yeah. to get them on the podcast. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> yes, I'm definitely. Crowbarring that in definitely. there, Hugh. De definitely. <laughs> um, so, so for those of... Uh, You've spoken about the, 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 the scorecard. If people go to ivconsulting.co.uk, 
there's a uh, image there that people can just click on and they can get the scorecard. I think for anybody that's in business at the moment, thinking about that value uh, proposition is absolutely key. I'll certainly be jumping on this and having a look about what Brilliant. we're doing with the job pod and one hour content. Cause I think that sounds like a really great uh, scorecard. Thanks for that. You, you ready for some quick fire questions? I certainly am. Fantastic. So, uh, what's your favorite app or SaaS product that you're using every day at the moment? Well, my favorite app is Notability, and it actually fits in with the, the flexibility lifestyle. So I normally get up at about six o'clock in the morning. I potter down, make myself a cappuccino, and then I have a massive big white magnet, you know, whiteboard. I like to draw, doodle, unpack my ideas. I don't do client work first in the thing in the morning. It's creative work. And then what I do is I take a photograph of that and put it into Notability. And then on my iPad, I can then put it into my journal and then I just write notes and make certain notes and then I can just record things to it or I can type things to it and pretty much every model and everything that we've created follows this pattern the valuable business builder system went through this the valuable business builder scorecard went through this the stock multi-lens model for analyzing companies went through this it's a really really creative way to actually marry you know the whole way of thinking and it can be on your phone your computer you know everywhere you go so when you get that inspiration record it because in my case i forget it every time i think what was that great idea i had so that's my go-to <laughs> app <laughs> what's your uh, what's your most recommended book you i'd say a very good one is is uh, the e-myth revisited by michael gerber because he was the first person to really make the distinction between working on the business and in the business. And he, he very much spelled out that a lot of people are suffering from what he termed was an entrepreneurial seizure. And that entrepreneurial seizure means that people set up businesses, but they don't plan to build a valuable business. And it's a real shame because although there's a big opportunity, in the UK, about 50% of businesses fail within the first five years. And of the ones that make it, another 40% fail by their 10th birthday. And for startups, over 90% of new models fail. And it's a backdrop of low profitability. And really, he was, I'd say, the first person to shine a light on, listen, you need to work on the business it's so 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 important and that work was sort of furthered on by mike michalowicz which in clockwork is another good book in that genre if it was and then uh, the next book you should read when i eventually get around to writing one will be the stuff that i do which takes it where it gives you the toolkit the training and the expertise to actually work on your book or oh, sorry on your business the the e-myth i was thinking about the e-myth when you were talking about you know that 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 kind of paradigm uh and i think it's so it's quite it's very well written it's very story orientated isn't it about and it, it's very really? basic business ideas that they share and then you can apply yeah. but you the way you apply it and um yeah it's it, like don't be put off by the cover i don't think it's got a great cover but it's a it's yeah. a very good it's a very good book uh, who's your favorite youtuber or podcaster well, I'm not a massive YouTuber, but I would say anyone in the SME space or in, in, uh, sort of Daniel Priestley on any of his stuff on YouTube is worth listening. He's phenomenal when it comes to, you know, same building scaling and, you know, the whole journey, the whole entrepreneurial journey. But what he does, I think, particularly well on the YouTube and the podcast is he puts things in context. There's a clear context to, to everything he does. And 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 it, it's actually proven and it works. And so and it's all action orientated because I think we can all get into the habit of, you know, looking at more and more information. But you need information. And then a bit like Tony Robbins, then you need to do something. You need to take massive action, even if it doesn't work, which a lot of the time it doesn't. So, yeah, I'd highly recommend uh, any of his material. That's great. You know, Daniel's YouTube is fantastic. Uh, there's lots of talks that he's done, but also more practical, shorter, shorter pieces. And uh, yeah, as you say, taking action is is yeah. absolutely key. If you're start, if you're thinking about starting a business, start it, yeah. and then yes. we can look, talk about sharpening sharpening yeah. bits uh, bits and bobs up. Who's an up and comer, Hugh, that we should be keeping an eye on? Uh, in, you know, someone like a Huffington, Bezos, or Musk. 
Well, you know, I think the world's changed. I don't know who's the next Elon Musk or the next, you know, Jeff Bezos. But what I do think when Steve Jobs said, I believe that if you put affordable technology in the hand of the masses, you'll create a shift of power from the few to the many. And I really think now is the time to create your life by design. You're actually build that business that you've always thought about. Create that freedom. Have that fun, flexibility and funds. And uh, so, so I think it's now more a case of who are the thousands and hundreds of thousand pe thousands of people who are going to actually grab that opportunity and, uh, you know, really, really have a career that they love and they're inspired by. I wake up every morning thinking, wow, how lucky am I to do something I love to do and I get paid for it. And I think that's, that's something that actually now is possible for, uh, for, for, for basically so many more people. In the olden days, it was really shut out, mm. you know, effectively, you know, the sort of the big companies had all the assets. But now we all have the assets, you know, the YouTubes, the CRM systems, Amazon platforms. It's all available for us to use at very low prices. So what you're saying is that the next must be us character is currently listening to this podcast has all the tools in front of them and they they just need to take some action and then they'll step into that space D definitely wonderful thanks for that hugh and hugh where's the best place for people to interact with you online i think the best thing would be just to to uh you know please do uh connect on linkedin but uh, I would go to the Integrated Value Consulting website. If you type in my name, Hugh Page and IVC, and I have to say that because if you just type in Hugh Page, unfortunately, somebody's called their company Hugh Page and it sells agricultural machinery and is all over Google. So my name is a disaster from that point of view. But go to the website, have a look at it. The work is designed to be practical and actionable. But the really the next step that I would say it, it's been designed to deliver value and it would certainly give me pleasure if you just hopped on, clicked on the photograph to check, are you building a valuable business? Run, run through the scorecard and uh, have a look at the diagnostic, what it reveals for your business. And if you're interested, jump on a discovery call. They're always designed around deliver value first. Yes, we'll show you what we're up to. If you have an interest, great, but it's not a sales call. It's, it's to share the message. Wonderful. Thanks for that, Hugh. There we have it. Hugh Page is the managing director and founder of Integrated Value Consulting, a business advisory firm that works with SMEs and investor-backed startups to build, scale, and exit valuable businesses at a premium. He got his first customer back after the 2008 crash using his own network. A friend sent him a check because they wanted to be the first customer on the, uh, what's it called? The ledger. Is that the right term, Hugh? The ledger. Uh, yeah. From Select Executive <laughs> Search. His uh, most, rec most recommended app is Notability, which he uses in conjunction with a whiteboard to be creative and come up with different ideas. The most recommended book is The E-Myth Revisited by Michael Gerber. Also suggested that we check out Clockwork. He loves watching Daniel Priestley's YouTube appearances, some really valuable uh, content from Daniel Priestley, as always. And we should be keeping an eye on you. Yes, that's you. People that are listening or watching this podcast, you've got all the tools to hand to go and create a new life for yourselves. And Hugh wants you to go out and build a passionate business, passionate, valuable business for yourself. You can find Hugh on LinkedIn. Just go to Hugh Page. I'm sure he'll accept an invite. And please check out ivconsulting.co.uk to have a look at Hugh's scorecard. That's I-V-C-O-N-S-U-L-T-I-N-G.co.uk. Hugh, thanks for joining us today on The Job Pod. Brilliant. Thank you very much, James, for being a pleasure to be on The Job Pod. Smashing. And thank you for joining us today on The Job Pod for our interview with Hugh. If you want to make sure that you see more of these kind of interviews on the Jod Pod, you need to play the YouTube game. Hit subscribe, hit the like, thumb me up -y button, hit the bell so you get a notification each time that we upload an episode. And 
Let's ask you a question in the comments below. You know, he's got a wealth of experience about creating value, valuable uh, businesses that are designed to scale, grow, and uh, exit at a premium. I'm sure that if you are thinking about starting a business, you want to learn from Hugh. So ask some questions below, and I will bully Hugh into coming back and answering every single one of them. Hopefully you've been inspired by Hugh and his message uh, today. Please go and build something for yourself and inspire the next generation. Thanks for joining us today on The Job Pod. If you enjoyed this interview, why don't you check out some of these other interviews that we've done on The Jod Pod. More inspirational CEOs, coaches, entrepreneurs, founders, and authors. I'm sure there's something here that will inspire you to build something new.